I'm going to run through the operation of a residual current device, RCD. We'll try and build that up just one step at a time. So let's start with this, which is an iron ring. And the iron ring is called a toroid. So a toroid. And what we're going to do is put a couple of conductors onto this. So here's a conductor. And we're going to wrap it around here. There we go. So if I pass a current into this coil, it will produce a flux. The magnetic flux will begin to flow around this ring. This ring is crucial later. So Let's suppose I put another conductor onto this. And let us pass a current this way. And for the sake of argument, let's say these are the same current. So one ampere and one ampere. So if I send one ampere through this in this direction, then this coil will produce a flux, which will try to go that way. So if we get a situation where we have one conductor producing a flux in that direction and another conductor producing a flux in that direction, and they're equal, then in this case, they are equal and opposite. They cancel each other out. So effectively, no flux will flow in either direction around this iron ring, the toroid. So let's just take this one step further. We could connect this to our main supply, and this would be your live or your line. This is neutral. And over here, we're going to put the circuit or circuits that we wish to protect. So over here, this could be uh, a toaster, a hedge trimmer, a lawnmower, uh, a cooker. It could be an entire premises. Um, but this is the circuit that we're trying to use and the one that we want to protect the user from getting a shock from. So let's have a look at it. In this situation, from the supply, the current goes along here, through the load and back to the neutral. So under this situation, one load, live and neutral conductors, there will be no flux flowing in this ring because the currents are equal. If we get a situation where, for whatever reason, one of these currents is different, let's suppose something occurs that makes this current 1.1 ampere, then this is different to this. So the current this way is different to this way, and that imbalance will produce a flux in this ring. And that's essential to the next step of the process. So, this is taking us one step further. So what I've got here is that. I've just introduced a double pole switch because this is what is contained within an RCD. So a line will come through here to our load and then we come back to the neutral. Let's consider what happens. <clears throat> Over here, there is a circuit which is designed to detect if there is a flux flowing in this. So this circuit contains electronics. So there's electronics in there. We have another coil wrapped around the toroid. So this is a sensing coil. Should any flux flow in this uh, toroid in any direction, it will be picked up by this coil and the electronics amplifies it, makes it bigger, and we then use that 
to operate this switch. So if we have a, a particular occurrence such as a fault or someone gets an electric shock, then the idea is to open this, open these uh, contacts so that we no longer have the supply coming onto the circuit. Let's have a look at that right now. So let us suppose this is a toaster. There you go, there's our toaster. So in normal operation, we close the switch and the current will flow through this path. And I'm just gonna pick an arbitrary current. Let's say for the sake of argument, we have 10 amperes flowing through the circuit. If there's 10 amps going this way, then there's 10 amperes coming back this way. Okay, so let us suppose that the toaster develops a fault. Perhaps one of the elements touches the side of the metal casing, so it's going to earth and causes uh, a fault and an increase in current. Or perhaps another scenario of a person, it could be a child or whatever, is foolish enough to stick a knife down into the toaster while it's running and perhaps they get a shock. So. Uh, let me scribble in my person. There we go. A level art skills coming to the fore. There we go. So here's our person, and they do something which results in an electric current going through their body. So they touch with a knife, for example, the insides of the toaster, and they will get a shock that produces a current going through their body and their body is basically on the ground, so connected to earth. So a current will flow through them. If we stop for a moment and consider what is happening, there is no longer 10 amperes flowing all the way around this circuit. At this point, let's suppose we take a tiny, tiny current. I'm going to invent the number. We no longer have 10 amps, we have 10 Point one amps. So here we have 10.1 amps. So this current coming down here and through the person is 10.1 amperes, but along the bottom there is only 10. So we now have a difference in current, and this will send a flux around this path. That flux will be picked up by this coil. The electronics amplifies that and operates the breaker. So this breaker will open and cut off the supply to the circuit. Hope that makes sense. So let's look at the final bit. Well, pretty much all RCB, RCDs, carry a test button and what the test button does is it simulates a current imbalance so quite typically the test button will connect from here there's the button and it will connect with a resistor to reduce the current so we don't have a large bang to there so I'm going to scribble all over my diagram, but the current normally comes through here. But when we press the test button, we're going to take more current through this part of the circuit when we press this and it will flow to there. So we have more current flowing here than here, and that will operate this. So that's simply test. Okay, I'm sure I've missed something, but that is an RCD at super high speed. Hope that made sense.